Hello and welcome to the Practical Animal Channel. Hello, John. The channel is for you if you are interested in knowing what it takes to work with animals as an animal industry professional. This week, my guest on the show is Francisco Charneca. Francisco is originally from Portugal. He has been living in Brazil for many years. I met Francisco when I took up falconry in Brazil, and subsequently I became a vet in that country. Francisco was already an established wildlife artist and wildlife sculptor, and he is also an accomplished outdoorsman interested in hunting, the hunting of two species of large mammal, the buffalo that exists in Brazil and the wild pig that exists in Brazil. He's going to talk about how he became a successful wildlife artist and sculptor and his involvement in the hunting scene in Brazil. Francisco Charneca, welcome to the Practical Animal Channel. Thank you. Welcome. Francisco, to Brazil, my house. please can you explain how you became a successful professional wildlife artist and sculptor? In Mozambique, in Africa, since 96, the, the, the year of 1960 to 97, uh, 1975, uh, where I started hunting in Mozambique with my father. So the, the, the contact with animals is a long way uh, from my childhood until now. And the art also became with me when I, when I was born. I have never uh, had a, a teacher to, to know how to paint or to draw or to sculpt. Uh, before that, I uh, in Portugal, I have been in uh, university making the studies of landscape architecture um, environment architecture and we learn a, a lot of uh, ambiental and ecological things francisco can and, you yes. explain please the significance of what you've just called the pantanal what is the pantanal brazil was a, uh, a big Cross of uh, of uh, earth that came from Africa and is has gone until where it is now. But that uh, uh, the plague, uh, the tectonic plague, I don't know it's, what's the, the word, is it's not horizontal. Is the the only continent I know that rivers are born near the sea and come to inside the continent. And they made a big uh, plain uh, with a, a, a big lake, a natural uh, fresh water uh, named Pantanal that uh, takes a little bit of Bolivia, Brazil, and Paraguay is the, the biggest uh, plain uh, with water, uh, fresh water in the world, bigger the, than the um, United States. We have uh, I don't, Everglades, but in Brazil, it's really bigger. And we have another one uh, in Rio Amazonas, but th that's different. That's another one. And the most Brazilians don't know that the river Amazon, when he, when he enters in Brazil until the, the end in the sea, is eight meters difference. Only eight meters difference. <laughs> Uh, that's why he's a, league, a big becomes a big lake over a forest. So it's a big floodplain, the Pantanal. 
yes. And the Pantanal is also the, the same. Uh, all the rivers come in, into the center of uh, South America, made that big plain uh, with water. And that water goes to the, an, another river that goes to and it goes to the sea in Mar del Plata, in Argentina, in Paraguay, in Uruguay. Uh, in, uh, in ancient times, uh, the conquerors of the inter interior of South America to come to Pantanal go from Buenos Aires with, river, with a, a boat and come until Pantanal, until Cuiabá, that is the geodesic center of uh, South America. Uh, so the Pantanal is, uh, has a, a big uh, ecological diversity in, in plants and in uh, animals, fishes, reptiles, uh, birds, everything. It's a uh, little bit of Paradise. Uh, I invite all English people that likes to see nature to come here. It's very good, very nice. And the time to come here is the summer in England. That's the winter in Brazil, where we don't have uh, run uh, uh, rain. R uh, the rain in in Brazil falls in the same time that. Uh, falls in in England, and uh, it's it, the, the 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 reason to come in that time is because the the, the most of the water dries and make a lot of little lagoons where you can see a lot of birds, fish, caiman, uh, deers, everything. It's uh, something special. And if you like to fish, now we are practice, uh, practicing in Pantanal the leave, the, the catch and release fishing to, to, to maintain species because uh, a lot of people eating could finish the, the, the fish. And you can also preserve the biggest elements, uh, biggest, biggest fishes to, to, to you if you want to come here fishing. <laughs> and for another one that comes to, to take the same fish. <laughs> so the situation in Brazil seems to be that the wild boar and the wild buffalo are both introduced non-native species in Brazil, non-native to Brazil. And because they are not native in the wild in Brazil, but they are found in the wild as introduced exotic species, they are causing lots of ecological problems. Is that right? That's right. Uh, when men in, intervene in nature, uh, I, I, can't, I can say every time you intervene in nature with foreign process, you make a disequilibrium. It's natural. Uh, even at your home, if you bring someone outsider to your house, your life will become different. You will lo lose something. And when we got an, a different species to an eco ecosystem, you are making an, a, 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 someone will compete for eating with others. Uh, for now, the, the wild bull is also, uh, uh, I can say, uh, um, an allied to nature in Brazil. Because you have a lot of states in Brazil where you have not more uh, wild cats, like Pantera onça and uh, another one. The big cats are um, the jaguar and the puma. Yes. So when the wild boar come as an uh, as a, 
an animal uh, in nature, the species of big cats return because they have how to eat, to, to feed them. As you know, in nature, you must have an area, area. you must have uh, where they, they can catch, you must water and food. The, the, the size of Brazil is the same. The place where they can catch has become uh, leader. Uh, 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 the, the, the forest has been uh, reduced, but not so much as they say in Europe. We have 66% of natural uh, landscape preserved in Brazil, only 8% used in agriculture, and 12% uh, used in cattle. And we feed a quarter of humanity. They multiplied by 28 the production of an, uh, an act, hectare, act, acre. Uh, the same space in agriculture with new techniques of breeding and uh, producing uh, agriculture has multi have multiplied 28 the productivity of agriculture in Brazil. Using ecological uh, systems, they don't make uh, the, the turning of ground when you mobilize ground to 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 make uh, uh, to make cereal, the the contact of oxygen with the the, the ground that is turned releases to to the to the atmosphere more dioxide carbon carbon dioxide than if you bring uh, fire on, on the ground. Do you and Brazilian has uh, invented a process that makes a hole and put the, the seed inside with not uh, moving the, the soil. And the production is bigger than ever. So, Francisco, the wild pig, uh, the wild boar, and the wild buffalo, both are introduced species causing a negative impact on Brazil's ecosystem. Do you think, as a conservationist, that these two species really ought to be managed with the goal of eradication from Brazil? or with the goal of reducing them to a more viable population size? That's a good, uh, a good, uh, good question. In, uh, in Texas, Texas has uh, about 600,000 kilometers, I think. Uh, is, he has uh, about 80% uh, of the space of Mato Grosso. They have a population about 3 million wild pigs. And they say, the university, the university studies say, you, you need to uh, reduce two thirds of uh, that species by year only to maintain equilibrium. In each three pigs, you must kill two to maintain equilibrium. Francisco, speaking as a nature conservationist, as a hunter, what do you think is the best way 20 years from now, in, in the long term, 30 years from now, what is going to be best for Brazil's ecosystems? 
is it going to be to maintain and enhance populations of wild boar and buffalo uh, within quotas, to hunt them within quotas, to eradicate them completely for the benefit of the environment, or what? What is best 20 years from now? What would you like to see happen? I think that wild boar, they would be, wouldn't be uh, able to uh, eradicate. That's impossible. They are like rats. <laughs> it's impossible. Uh, only if the, uh, a disease, uh, a COVID from for wild boars could uh, make them, and even that wouldn't be able, because I know that when in Australia they put uh, rabbits, they they got, got rabbits from England to Australia to eat. Some of them become wild, and now they have a big problem. They invented a uh, a disease named myxomatosis, you know? Yes. They killed millions of rabbits. And now they have rabbits and myxomatosis. Yes. <laughs> and the problem is not finished. And the disease go to Europe and in Europe made a lot of destruction from natural animals. So, the best way is not to don't play with nature like that that idiot that made the, the computer we are using that wants to make a cloud over world of the world you don't doesn't know the, the risk they the the world uh, will uh, live if he uh, does that because oh, uh, that uh, stupid theory of uh, climate change uh, they don't know they don't see they don't want to see that climate change is natural you can do anything because it always uh, happens that was great Francisco Charneka wildlife sculptor wildlife artist conservationist and hunter Thank you very much for being on the Practical Animal Channel. Thank you, Will. When we need, I'm here. That's great. Thanks, Francisco. Thank you. See you, bye. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.